October 2020. My name is Anya and I am interviewing Linda. We're both interviewing at home through a site called Squadcast. We are taking part in Women in Action, Stories of Hope, Resilience and Resistance, a Merseyside-focused art and heritage project led by Collective Encounters in partnership with the National Museums Liverpool and funded by National Lottery Heritage Fund. The project is gathering women's memories of resilience, activism and community organisation in Merseyside in the late 20th and early 21st century. The, the Ballad of 18 Women The sound, they're, they're all saying, and the, and the girl lad be doing, they're all saying, well, it's always been done that way. And I said, well, just because it's always been done that way it doesn't mean to say it's right. Hello, and welcome to our play. We hope you will be inspired. A radio ballad's what we'll share a glimpse of women's lives. The women bound by nothing but the city they call home. Each fascinating, full of hope but randomly were chose. Each woman weaves her unique thread, a tapestry of change. A net that holds the city safe can move a mountain range. Each woman treads her unique path. Sometimes it seems alone. But there is friendship in this work. Togetherness in hope. So stay a while and bask in hope of matriarchal rule. The 18 Women of Action. The pride of Liverpool. Sweet through Liverpool as the city reaches new heights of addiction in a shocking national epidemic. And unfortunately, my son got involved with that when he was only 16. Um, so I, I, there was a lot of problems for me. Um, and there was no, no help or support 
was anywhere to be found um, in Liverpool. I, um, at some point, um, looked around for help and went to a support group, but it was quite a distance from where I lived. So um, when my son did get through, you know, the hard parts of, of, of his addiction, I decided I wanted to give something back. So um, I formed Sanctuary Family Support with three other parents. I mean, it was the mid 60s and there was all sorts of stuff going on about black rights in America, about the rights of Catholics in the north of Ireland, about um, Vietnam War, things like that. So there are lots of things that would make you think. I decided then that I wanted to set sanctuary up in the south end of Liverpool because um, that's where there was no support for black people in that area. If you don't fight for these things, you don't get. So going back to those first years when I set sanctuary up, I, I had to do all the work myself. It was hard work, it really was, but look where it's got us now. It, it, was, you know, it was worthwhile. I've got two family support workers now. Um, I've got a counsellor and I've got an admin work. I'm a qualified counsellor myself, by the way. I've got a lot of interest for world politics, um, anti-racism, justice and equality. Um, I'm also very concerned about climate change. And so from an early age, um, I was aware of all those issues and trying to do my bits in the world to try to make it a better place. I have more questions than answers. I want to learn more about this and I want to talk about this and change it. I went there with, um, um, to get some counselling and they ended up staying there volunteering. Becoming a parent, um, I think, was a massive step for me towards um, engaging more with uh, feminism and um, diversity, intersectionality and stuff. I always got told I asked too many questions. From quite an early age, really, I think I had an awareness that there, there was this thing called feminism and that we kind of need it. <laughs> I was involved in like some activism, like maybe a bit of environmental activism or, you know, like anti-war things. And I kind of, I think I had this like drive in me to make things a bit different or just like a bit better for people. I met up with some other people. They had a Labour Party building. So I used to go over there just to the meetings that were going on. They only lasted about an hour. Then I was roped in again. So with the pram and the baby, I found myself posting leaflets through the door, all handwritten. When I was working there for Oxfam, I um, became more, so as I say, more socially aware and became more aware of uh, the way that some people live in the world and that there are people um, who are trying to improve those situations. So maybe in a way, back to when it started my, <laughs> with my work with the community. Um, so we have been starting doing volunteer work and helping the community. We, I, think, I think that's kind of a big part of it, is leading to a community of people that are interested in making and fixing and maintaining, um, coming together and sharing their own knowledge as well with others. Any place you'd find a group of women, we tried to put ourselves <laughs> We did, we did our best. We did every way we could think of um, to, to actually open up a, a dialogue with women. You know what? And it was always, what did you think you would be when you were a child? What was your ambition? I left school with not many qualifications because um, my biological mum had died when I was 14, which kind of messed up my GCSEs. Um, so I then went to work for the council as like a part-time, what you call a nursery assistant. But being the clever person I am, I got some qualifications, climbed the, the little ladder in the council and became a nurse nurse and then I became a family support worker and then I became a family link worker. 
Um, I've o- I'd always wanted to be a police officer, but I didn't really see myself in the police because the, you didn't really see many black police officers. But while I was doing work as a family link off worker, I came across a few black police officers who I worked with and they kind of inspired me to join the police force. Um, but I just decided, yeah, you know, there was an election on and they'd said at the bottom of one of the leaflets, come and knock on this door if you want to help. So I went and knocked on that door. 18 women, stories to tell. 18 women, like so many others. 18 women, from a rich well. 18 women, taking their place in the world. United in the sisterhood. Oh, united change the world for good. Thanks to women. I'm sure the acting, my activist, activist, I cannot say that word, our start is uh, last year during the um, during the pandemic. Since the start of the COVID pandemic, there has been a 300% increase in hate crimes against the UK's East and Southeast Asian communities. I think it's because as from January onward, not. January 2020, when this uh, sign of the coronavirus started, um, these Chinese people were targeted. Yeah, the police is quite a, a, one of the, you know, the holy grails of structural racism. So while I worked in the council, I had quite a lovely experience, felt quite embraced as a black person. So I'd unlearned a lot of the behaviours that I learned as a child, like, so I was quite confident as a black person when I walked into the police. Um, but quite quickly, I realised that that was not something that was accepted in the police. You kind of, you had to act in a certain way. It was quite clear that the police still had a lot of overt and covert racism. And they didn't really want to be challenged on it. But being quite young, I was like, oh, maybe they don't know. I'll tell them about it. Standing up for what you thought was right and standing up for ordinary people was, was automatic. By February, uh, we were getting young children from the orchestra was telling us they'd been spat at, the calling names in school, as young as from six, seven. Some of them don't even know what's happening. So I told them about their racism and um, the, while they made a lot of noise and um, some people ha- who possibly had the right intentions tried to do something, a lot of people protected those who were sort of identified as being racist and nothing was done and I became sort of a pariah within the police force. Um, I think quite a lot of people think I left the police in like a in this awful place where I was, you know, under a shroud of blinking (laughs) sort of conspiracy and awfulness, but I left the place actually in quite a good place. I can't help it, that's the way I'm made. I'm always there to help somebody. I don't like to see people getting too stung fairly. You know, I don't like that. If I see somebody who needs help, I'll help them. Whether I know them or I don't know them, so. The time when I knew for certain that I'd made the right decision was when I was I seen the murder of George Floyd um, at the hands of a police officer. Yeah, so that's how I become. I mean, I'm not. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want to be an activist. By fury fueled or pain or love. Their starting point diverse. They fight against injustice and in action they converge. Are you yourself reflected here? Are there familiar themes? Are you in fact an activist? Waiting in the wings.